the hara, there's a belly button, approximately a hand width below the belly button. Uh, it's a big, these are big ones, some points like that one we did next to the nose, mm -hmm. teeny teeny point, ear points, teeny teeny points, chakras, big spinning wheels, bigger than a quarter. So it's a whole big area. Um, let yourself be drawn to where you want to be and don't don't worry if you're exactly correct. Um, this is a very good one almost always for a longer fork and then from there up oftentimes shorter forks. The Hara is the center of your energy. So when you are treating, you can't really over treat this point. So like if I was going to repeat chakras or any points, I could always have a long fork on the Hara. And these are often nice to do at least two to six times. So then if I go up to the next chakra with my medium fork, I could continue the lower fork on the Hara. And the stone is really doing a lovely job of deepening, grounding, and dissipating this energy. The higher fork is the solar plexus chakra. The chakras, by the way, correspond to um, endocrine organs, our glands for our hormones, and nerve centers. So physiologically, they are also centers for a lot of activity. But um, they sort of have emotional correspondences as well. And this solar plexus one, right where your ribs come together, oftentimes has to do with people's personal power. Often be bound up in this area because of the diaphragm, because of the liver. You know, we don't tend to do a lot of diaphragm breathing. So if you can feel the vibration of the fork, you will often feel bound up fascia in this area. And we're actually going to learn some craniosacral moves where you facilitate releases of the diaphragms, which are basically, in this case, we have actually obviously the umbrella shaped muscle of the diaphragm. But there are other centers in the body where there is transverse fascia. Uh, most of the fascia runs relatively vertically, but there's a couple diaphragms in the body where the fascia runs relatively horizontally, and the fascia tends to get bound up there. So you can do craniosacral and myofascial release there as well. And since things tend to get so bound up here because of the liver and the diaphragm, this is an area where you might find it effective to have one hand helping you with the body work and one hand with the fork. So the other hand can be listening, assessing, supporting, nurturing, or doing craniosacral or myofascial release work. <laughs> Right now I'm using my fingers to kind of very gently open up the tissue. So it may just look like a static hold, but the fingers are actually opening and lifting. Emotionally, the liver can do a lot with processing your um, anger, repressed anger, and then of course the liver itself has over 500 functions physiologically, and it has to process all the chemicals, you know, alcohol obviously, everything that comes in cigarettes, medications. But in Chinese medicine, the liver not only deals with anger, but it oversees the smooth flow of qi everywhere in the whole body. So if somebody's stressed 
or has any tension or any blockages, uh, the liver is always going to be involved as well. And that's the whole meridian and the whole energy system, not just, not just right here where the liver is. And its yang counterpoint is gallbladder, which is the one that runs on the entire side of the body. So all that lateral line work, one-sided stuff like one-sided headaches, piriformis syndrome, So my one hand is doing MFR really, really gently, while the other hand is using tuning fork. But you can also always use two forks at a time. And so you can always have one on the hara, landing with your hand on the side of the fork. try to do the other points a little faster, but this is about the speed you'd really go, like actually hanging out with and exploring each point and often treating each point like two to six times. Just like massage, you can feel and assess how they are responding by how receptive the tissue is, how their breathing is how the vibration travels, if you feel any therapeutic pulses or releases in heat. The heart chakra is between the, uh, at the level of the fourth rib. Which is about the level of the nipple line if it was men or small breasted women. Um, large breasted women, the nipple line is not typically exactly at the fourth rib. But again, all of these chakras are rather large points, so you don't need to be precisely on it. And um, but it's typically right around here. If you're a little bit higher or lower, that's okay. chakra points and then we'll move on to some wonderful chest points. Obviously this is one of them. It's called Ren 17 or Conception 17 and it's great for um, all kinds of chest stuff including lung stuff whether it's physical like bronchitis, pneumonia, a cough or emotional like grief or love. The throat chakra point, another conception or Ren point, is right at the base of the notch of the throat obviously a vulnerable area for a lot of people so you don't want to come in from this angle or above them and you want to be very careful that you're not pressing into the soft divot you want to be on the bone at the base oftentimes you will be less intimidating if you get down low and you make sure that your hand lands where you want it to be so that you're not like coming at them with a floating fork to do this without blocking the camera, but we had already ascertained that this was not the best angle to work with this client earlier today. So we'll see if it's better to be over here. And already it is.
sometimes it can be comfortable if you're, um, for some clients, whether you're sitting or kneeling or standing, if it's comfortable for the client to you to be in, at the head of the table for this. Um, one advantage is that if it's comfortable for the client, you can use a supportive ulnar surface of your hand to be supportively resting on the bony part of the chest, not anywhere near the sternal notch. So if this is comfortable for your client, that way that can be a very nice supportive way to sort of uh, be more nurturing and dissipating of your energy, uh, of the, um, so they can feel your hand versus just the poking of the metal. But that um, <coughs> angle, it's um, being around somebody is not always comfortable. which it does not feel comfortable. But if I was to do it, I would support my hand and come in like that. That doesn't feel comfortable. A lot of times people do chakra balancing work because it's so powerful. We hold a lot of our emotions and our tension and our fascial restrictions there. It relates to our nerve centers and our endocrine centers. And one of the advantages is actually because these are vulnerable areas. If I was to just use my hands, whether it was above their body or on their body, it might feel more personal and vulnerable. And with the tuning forks, it's a very clear, pure vibration. And so it's kind of an advantage that oftentimes it doesn't feel as personal or vulnerable. And there's something about the C sharp uh, ohm frequency that can profoundly bring people to a peaceful center and connection with exactly like where they're supposed to be. Last but not least, there's actually two more. People often end at the third eye. And Elise was working quite in the middle of the forehead, which is also fine, but from Chinese medicine, tends to be working closer to the eyebrows. And both are fine. You can go wherever you're drawn. There's a lot of points on the face. Again, landing with your hand first. Side of the fork, nice and stable. You don't want like a floating fork around the face. This is a very relaxing point. It's on the conception vessel and in acupuncture. It's uh, on the. It's an extra point. It's called Yin Tong. And a lot of my colleagues and I would call this just the happy point or the relaxation point because almost all clients find this incredibly relaxing. I've had a couple clients that this actually triggers, um, but most clients just. Uh, this is like a bliss point. It takes them into deep, deep relaxation. And the other hand is just being supportive now. But if it was comfortable, I could use the other point with vibration. And that could be on a point, or that could be next to her head. It could be uh, medium and low, or it could be both mediums. But oftentimes it can be really nice to hear the tones while you work with the tones. And then they can hear them and feel them at the same time. They'll kind of vibrate their whole skull and body in an interesting way. And there are a lot of overtones in the way this C-sharp is made on the forks. So it's sort of like all the colors of the rainbow. They're not just getting the C-sharp, but they're getting all the overtones. And if you are going to let them hear it at the same time, and you're doing it more than once, it can be quite lovely to switch which ear they're hearing it in. So now this is the ear they're hearing.
really showed you some great face points. All the way around the occiput and ears are wonderful as well. And I'll just remind you that two of my very favorite points in the body are gallbladder 14. They're ridiculously re relaxing. So whether you use gentle, gentle fingers or tuning forks, about an inch above the eyebrows, right about above the pupils is gallbladder 14. And this is super lovely with tuning forks or really, really gentle finger pressure. It can melt away all kinds of tension.